Hello and welcome to yet another V-Ray tutorial. In this one, we'll be exploring the option to effortlessly transfer scenes from Enscape to V-Ray in 3ds Max. First, we have the project created in Revit, complete with plans, facades, and 3D views. If we launch Enscape, you'll notice that the project is already configured with greenery and materials from the Enscape library. Now, I want to transfer that project to 3ds Max and refine everything using V-Ray. This is especially helpful when the designers finish the project and more polished visuals are required. Let's see how to do that. If you are using Enscape 3.5.6 or above, you will notice a button featuring the V-Ray logo. Upon clicking it, a window will appear, displaying a list of all 3D views. From there, I will choose one and click Export. It's important to note that the exported view will be the selected one, not the current view. Let's explore how to transfer that project to 3ds Max. Since V-Ray 6.2, 3ds Max users have the option to import editable VR scenes. To do this, navigate to the V-Ray tab and choose Enscape VR Scene Importer. It's worth noting that this feature is still in beta. Next, select the exported file and click Open. A window with import options will appear. Here, you can see the chosen file and select the types of assets to be imported, whether geometries, cameras, and lights. Another crucial choice here is the path location. The folder where V-Ray will extract the textures as they are embedded in the VR scene by the Enscape exporter. You'll also notice that by default, Copy External Assets is enabled. This option will copy external assets that are referenced in the VR scene to the Extract Assets folder, so all imported content keeps its asset files in a single place. Additionally, the option to rescale objects to system unit scale is enabled. This will adjust the sizes of imported content to the current 3DS Max system unit setup. Now go ahead and click OK. After importing the Enscape project, you'll notice that all the geometry, including objects from the Enscape library, is present. Moreover, upon inspecting the materials, you'll find that they are seamlessly converted into V-Ray materials, retaining the settings from Enscape, along with all the textures like diffuse, roughness, and bump. Certainly, you have the flexibility to refine these materials, either using them as a base or opting for ready-made ones from Chaos Cosmos. Chaos Cosmos is a library housing 3D assets such as models, HDRIs, and materials neatly categorized. To ensure that textures wrap around objects seamlessly, you can enable the Triplanar Mapping option. Simply drag and drop the material onto the surface where you want to apply it. Another element we chose to import from Enscape earlier is the camera view, now presented as a V-Ray camera with a multitude of control options. For instance, we can leverage physically-based camera parameters such as F-number and shutter speed. In architectural visuals, straightening vertical lines is often a desired adjustment. Moreover, we have the flexibility to fine-tune the camera until we're satisfied, recognizing that composition plays a crucial role in enhancing our images from the outset. Once pleased with the composition, I can validate it by aligning with the golden ratio directly in the viewport. Let's initiate the interactive render and observe the current state of the image. As mentioned earlier, the materials, library objects, and even daylight with clouds have been imported. While I appreciate the initial images and the composition, it's evident that we need to enhance it by populating the scene with more grass and trees. For this task, I've utilized Chaos Scatters, a feature that allows me to distribute various models. In this case, I have a scatter with two types of grass downloaded from Chaos Cosmos. Let's add one more from there and review the scatter properties. I've already incorporated the two grass models and to add the new one, I'll click on the plus button in the Instanced Objects section. Now, our scatter is loaded with geometries and the next step is to determine on which surface they will be populated. 
simply click the plus button and choose the surface where you want to introduce the grass. Next, I will unhide props that I added from Chaos Cosmos in the same way. I've incorporated some autumn trees in the foreground and scattered leaves on the ground. However, the leaves are currently distributed uniformly, which may seem unnatural. In reality, leaves would be closer to the tree from which they fall. To simulate this, I've drawn circles around the trees, and I will utilize them with a distance texture. I'll add the circles to the shapes list and connect the texture to the count. This setup ensures that leaves will be scattered around the circles at a specified distance, controlled by the distance texture. To achieve a smoother transition, I'll utilize the output texture with an inverted curve. Additionally, I want to clear leaves around the trunks, so I'll include the circles in the exclude area. This same approach will be applied to the grass layer. Expanding on the scene, I've added more scatters for leaves and trees, introducing additional geometries from Chaos Cosmos, akin to what we did with the grass earlier. Moreover, I've created simple planes behind the buildings. Scattering trees on these planes simulates a hill, while another plane in the background represents a distant city. For the cityscape, I've used three building models and a few trees. It's important to note that the frequency value for the buildings is deliberately set low. This adjustment prevents the buildings from overshadowing the trees, considering their significantly larger size. Without this adjustment, only the buildings would be visible. I'm pleased with the overall look of the image, but there are a few changes I'd like to make. First, I think a more yellowish sky and light would complement the greenery. To achieve this, I'll turn to Chaos Cosmos once more, specifically looking for a suitable HDRI. We can use an HDRI to simulate light from a real moment captured in real life. Once I find one I like, I'll download it and simply drag and drop it onto the project. By locking the texture to the icon, I can easily rotate it directly from the viewport to find the right angle. Now that the sky looks better, I've noticed that the sun is a bit too strong. Let's address this by disabling it from the V-Ray Lister. Additionally, I've introduced a few artificial lights to bring more life to the building. Don't worry if some of the lights appear too strong. We can fine tune their intensity later on. For more information about the artificial lights, I'll leave a link in the description. This updated version looks significantly better. However, there's room for a few more enhancements. I've added a simulated cloud from Chaos Phoenix on the hill to introduce realism, atmosphere, and a sense of depth. You can find a link with a tutorial on how to make clouds with Chaos Phoenix in the description below. Speaking of depth, the buildings in the background should gradually fade and lose contrast, mimicking real-world conditions. To achieve this, I've incorporated V-Ray Fog. Initially, the fog effect might appear too strong. To mitigate this, I've increased the fog distance until I achieve the desired balance. Additionally, experimenting with different values for the height helps fine-tune the effect. For a more authentic look, I've enabled the Scatter GI option. When on, the fog also scatters global illumination that will increase realism, but it's important to note that this may impact rendering speed. I've also adjusted the fog transparency. Now, with these modifications, the background gracefully fades contributing to a more profound sense of depth in the image. The fog also introduces an interesting atmospheric element. Let's stop the interactive render and prepare for the final one. Open the render settings and select the resolution, HD in my case. I'll also include some render elements to facilitate fine tuning later, such as the intensity of the lights. Choose the render elements based on your specific needs in my case, I'm using V-Ray Crypto Matte, V-Ray Denoiser, V-Ray Light Mix, and V-Ray Back to Beauty. Begin the rendering process. As mentioned earlier, I intentionally kept some lights with higher intensity. 
Now, with the light mix, I can easily adjust their intensity until I'm satisfied. This also allows me to change their colors if necessary. I've also enabled lens effects to create flares around the light sources, but the effect is a bit too pronounced. I'll make adjustments to reduce it. Okay, that was all for that video. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. By now, you should have learned how to transfer your projects from Enscape to V-Ray in 3ds Max and a few more tips and tricks. Make sure you take a look at the rest of the videos on Chaos TV channel or check our blog and documentation for more product tips and tricks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you soon.